So that shiny new game just came out, Nine Souls, and you want to know if it's worth your time, right? Well, let's take a look at the game for some first impressions. Keep in mind this is not a full review, this is a quick look at the game. I played the game for around an hour and a half, so I'll show some footage of the game while describing it and giving a few thoughts on it. One thing I noticed right away about this game is that it drops you smack in the middle of a story. The way the game is makes me feel like I've been picked up and dropped right into the middle of a thick book. Here's what I mean. Everyone speaks of old events and things in the game as if you should already know what that means. I felt a little confused about the story and what exactly is going on throughout the one and a half hours that I played. The gameplay though is straightforward, no confusion there. The way the story begins is leaving me wondering whether or not there will be lots of explanation or backstory later on in this game. I hope there is, but even if there isn't, this game is still very interesting and probably worth a play if you're interested. I just researched a little and it seems that this game is inspired from a Chinese mythology revolving around an archer who had to shoot down 10 suns. You can look that up more on your own if you want want, but let's get into the actual game now. You can choose standard or story mode, and I chose standard. There are scenes in the game, and it begins with one as well. A cat-like figure seems to have defeated a smaller cat-like figure, and the smaller one falls off a cliff. Then some vines grab the one who fell and seems to have healed it, at least mostly. The vines take the person somewhere else, and then there's a kid playing a flute nearby. The cat person, whose name I'll probably mess up so I won't even try, then opens its eyes after the kid with the flute is done playing. That cat person is also the main character, and who you'll play as. The kid lives in Peach Blossom Village, and that's also where you as a main character have been staying with that kid as well. These people seem brainwashed too, always praising the nine souls and wanting to get picked by them. Fast forward, and the kid who played the flute, the one the main character has grown somewhat close to, is also one of the people being chosen by the nine souls. The game has a sudden shift that caught me off guard. Here I was thinking it was all swords and old timey, and then technology appeared, like a robot calling the main character to talk. And then of course the rest of the game has a lot of technology as well. The place where the village is seems to be false, where the villagers grow up in ignorance of the actual world. Back to the kid now. They all go to a structure, I guess you can call it, to pay respects to the flying throne because the nine souls ordered it to be this way. This seems to be a continuous thing and the villagers don't seem to understand at all what's going on. But once they enter that structure, the walls close and a floating device picks them up by their head and then cuts it off or destroys it, I don't know. Their headless body then falls onto the ground to be brought somewhere lower. Already at this point it seems that the nine souls are evil and the villagers are really dumb. When it gets to that one specific boy, the cat person decides to interfere. He saves him and then hacks the platform and goes down himself. The game is 2D and it has platforming. The main focus is on combat however, while platforming seems to be secondary to that. Here's a few things that you can do in the game or things I've done so far in the time that I've played. You can run, jump, hang onto ledges or certain parts of the walls, bounce off glowing green spheres, use a grappling hook, hang on ropes, parry some hits, use use a talisman to cause an explosion on enemies, dodge other heavier attacks, hack some things, use a recon drone, hack with that drone, and of course the classic slashing with your weapon. There is however a skill tree and that skill tree unlocks new abilities to use. Everything that I've done so far is just the beginning. You also have a medicine pipe that can only be used twice unless you rest and refill it at a root node. Root nodes are also where you respawn when you die. Later on when I get to the robot that's been communicating with me, any root node that you go to after that has the ability to teleport back to that main base area with the robot and in that main area you can also teleport back to the last root node that you were at. Also in that main area there were a few things that you could craft as well as a place to recycle items. I didn't get the chance to use that yet but I'm sure I will later in the game. From this point forward there wasn't too much story while I played, mostly just learning different combat techniques or game mechanics. The enemies start to get a little harder and more varied as well. I even faced one or two boss like battles and those seem to be the hardest so far. I died several times to each boss. My main mission in the game seems to be to control New Kunlun, this whole place. However, you must possess the seals to do that, and each of the nine souls have one. So you can see where that's going. I'll probably have to take their seals one by one, all while fighting enemies and bosses. I think this game has an interesting hand-drawn comic-like vibe to it. The graphics and world seem intriguing, and the combat can be difficult as well. There was more than one area where I died over and over until I found the best way to get through. This game seems pretty good so far, though that's my personal opinion. Whether or not this is your type of game. I'll see you on the next one.